Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Doubles and Triples, the T endorsement training. My name is Josh Barron, certified instructor here at Midwest Truck Driving School. Today, we're going to be covering the Doubles and Triples training, uh, specifically the T endorsement. Uh, so in order to get this endorsement, you got to have a, uh, a Class A CDL, and uh, we're going to talk about all the specifics that goes into getting this endorsement, as well as all the safety procedures when it comes to coupling, when it comes to uncoupling, converter dollies, all that good stuff. So let's go and dive right in uh, to the doubles and triples training here today. So obtaining a doubles and triples endorsement, that T endorsement, first of all, you got to be able to pass a DOT physical and receive a DOT medical card. Now, these medical cards are good for two years, and anyone that has a CDL has to receive a medical card um, uh, in order to drive a CMV. That's just one of those rules that uh, one of those things that you have to do. You got to take the written knowledge test at your state's DMV. Um, so some states call it a, a BMV or an MBD or an SOS, but it is your uh, Department of Motor Vehicles is essentially what it is. Uh, to drive a triple combination vehicle, you must have a Class A CDL with a doubles, triples, a T endorsement. And under federal regulations, before you can be trained to pull triples, you must have six months prior experience pulling a semi-trailer or pulling double pups with a gross combination weight rating of at least 26,001 pounds. And so this right here would be uh, considered a double pup combination unit. And uh, this co gross combination weight rating would be well over that 26,001 pounds. And LCV, you're going to hear me talking about LCV, which simply means long combination vehicle. Um, uh, under the Code of Federal Regulations, the double strip of endorsement is considered uh, an LCV, a long combination vehicle. Um, also considered a double bottom when you're talking about uh, two trailers as well. The world of doubles. Uh, so we're going to talk about, okay, what, what do doubles look like? And they, uh, there's a lot of different variations. So a double pup trailer consists of two 28.5 foot trailers known as pup trailers. So you can see this right here. This would be considered uh, double dry vans or double pup trailers. Uh, looks something like this. You see a lot of uh, UPS, FedEx, Reinhardt Foods, Cisco, they haul a lot of double pups, looks something like that. Then you have a Rocky Mountain trailer, uh, double trailer consists of a 40 to 53 foot trailer followed by a 28.5 foot pup trailer. So it looks something like this and uh, those are common more out west, um, what they call a Rocky Mountain double trailer. And then we have a turnpike double trailer consisting of two 48 foot trailers and it looks something like this right here. <clears throat> uh, the world of doubles continued. Uh, then you have a B train at double flatbed. And so these are known as, as B trains. And with, with B trains, um, there's only two articulation points. And you can see the fifth wheel right here. And then this part, there's actually a whole other set of axles here welded onto the frame of this front trailer uh, with a fifth wheel. And then that's how this trailer gets connected via this fifth wheel. So you have an articulation point here and an articulation point here. And then you have a B-Train double tanker. Once again, it's considered B-Train because the dolly here is, is not a dolly that you can disconnect and move around. It's attached right to the front tanker with a fifth wheel, and then that's how the second tanker gets pulled behind it. Uh, then we have an A-Train double dump truck, um, what a lot of people call a gravel train. Simply means we got a, a double dump truck here, you have two dumps, and then the dolly for here is going to be considered an A-train double where you have that converter dolly, which we'll talk about here momentarily. And uh, here's a set of, of double uh, dump truck here as well. These are side dump trailers. Um, not as common. I see a lot of mines and different things that have the side dump uh, simply to be able to, um, to, so that driver doesn't have to get out of the truck at all, and then they dump these at the same time. So kind of interesting there as well. Uh, converter dolly. So the converter dolly is going to be kind of that um, that main mechanism that allows you to connect a lot of different trailers together. It is going to be the most common type of double uh, double trailers out there are going to are going to use a train converter dollies that look something like this right here. A converter dolly connects a semi trailer to the rear of a tractor trailer, forming a double or triple combination. A converter dolly consists of a fifth wheel and one or two axles. So uh, a lot of times they just have one axle like that. Other times they have 
two axles. Uh, all converter dollies built since 1998 are required to have analog brakes, ABS. Um, all converter dollies built since 1975 are required to have spring brakes as well. Um, if you took the training on air brakes with the school here, you'll hear me talk a lot about spring brakes and air brakes and, and how those mechanisms work. Uh, if you haven't taken that course and want to know more information about that, check out the air brake course uh, online. Uh, also, we if a converter dolly has spring brakes, you release the brakes by using the dolly's parking brake control. Um, some converter dollies have spring brakes and others do not. Once again, anything built since 1975 is going to have spring brakes. Uh, before 1975, they didn't have spring brakes um, so if it uh, chances are you're gonna be pulling dollies with spring brakes so it's gonna have a parking brake control which we'll show you on the next slide here uh, converter dolly has its own separate air tank and air brakes so you can see that right right here its own separate air tank and you can see the brake chambers and its own separate uh, brakes right there uh, the converter dolly air tank drain valve on coupled doubles and triples should be closed. So a lot of times you have a tank drain on the bottom, on the bottom over here. And what that does is allows you to, to release any moisture or oil buildup in the dolly um, and, and get rid of that. But also, um, as you're going down the road, that needs to be closed so that the whole system holds air. To release the dolly's brakes, if the dolly is equipped with spring brakes, you can use the dolly's parking brake control, or if no spring brakes, you can open the air tank petcock. So once again, the majority of converter dollies nowadays have spring brakes, which are which are gonna allow you to release via that parking brake control. So you can see that in this picture right here. Um, that is the dolly's parking brake control. You push it in to release those spring brakes and you pull it out to engage those spring slash parking brakes. Uh, once again, if, if no spring brakes, you can open the air tank petcock. So if it doesn't have spring brakes on it, then chances are it's gonna have a set of emergency brakes um, on it that's going to use the air tank right here. It's going to use the air tank uh, to engage the service brakes. Um, and so while it's engaging the service brakes to, to, to release that, you want to drain out all that air and, and that way it's going to release the service brakes. But once again, more unlikely uh, that you're going to see that most of them are going to have spring brakes and to release that you're going to use the Dolly's parking brake control which looks something like that. Uh, the steps in uncoupling a converter dolly are lower its landing gear, disconnect the safety chains, apply the dolly spring brakes or chocks, release the pendulich, and slowly pull clear of the dolly. Um, so once again, a dolly is going to have uh, the, the um, landing gear. You can kind of see that right in the middle right here. This one happens to be a stationary landing gear. So um, it uh, you can't crank it up or down. It's just always always about three quarters of the way down and you lift off the dolly off the pintle hook that you can see right here. Um, and let's see, you have your electrical uh, pigtail plug-in right there and then you got your valves on the back of a trailer and that's how you connect that dolly here and then you got your valves that you connect it to. Um, uh, you got your latch right here that you want to latch and secure properly to, to make sure it can't, uh, that dolly can't pop off going down the road. And you also have an air cushioned snubber as well. So you can see that right there. And what that does is it keeps tension on that uh, pintle hitch and the pintle ring there. And it uh, stops it from moving back and forth and provides that shock absorption as well. <coughs> A dolly versus B dolly, or otherwise known as a C dolly. So the converter dolly described in your state CDL manual is an A dolly. So it's going to look something like this. Once again, these are the most common type of dollies, are A dollies. It has a single drawbar right here uh, whose eye fits over the pintle hook in the rear of the semi-trailer. The, the A dolly can pivot or articulate on that pintle hook. That is true. Um, and once again, that is the most common type of dolly that you see out on the road. A B dolly or C dolly has two draw bars, each with its own eye. These fit over two pintle hitches. These two connections prevent the B dolly from pivoting on the pintle hooks, thus eliminating one articulation point. B dollies are used to connect B, B train doubles. Uh, there are two pintle hooks in the rear of the trailer. So I will tell you, these are not as common. You don't see these 
a whole lot anymore. Um, nowadays, when it comes to B trains, they're going to look something like this, where it's not a dolly back here, but this whole, these last uh, axles are all a part of this front trailer. They're all welded to the trailer, and there's a fifth wheel back here just like this. And so it uh, you only have those two pivot points, a pivot point here and a pivot point here. Um, there's no uh, there, there's no dolly connection like this. It's all welded right to the first trailer. Um, so once again, you don't see these as much anymore. Um, you either see the B train uh, uh, doubles like this, or you see the A trains with, with, with the converter dolly, single axle converter dolly like this with just the one um, uh, pintle ring on the front. Uh, a B double rig or a B train double rig has two pivot articulation points. Um, once again, so a B train, you just have one articulation point, uh, articulation point here for the um, fifth wheel and then one articulation point here for the, uh, for, for the rear trailer as well. Service brakes, spring brakes, and ABS. Um, so once again, if you took the air air brake training. Uh, I'm going to cover this in explicit detail. So I'm going to cover this relatively briefly here. But uh, so your service brakes um, are uh, are going to be what's used when you hit the brake pedal. Uh, it's where you're sending air to the brake chambers. And this would be considered a service uh, service brake chamber right here. Uh, you can tell it's it's smaller. It's smaller. It doesn't have the big backside, the piggyback. Uh, it's a smaller brake chamber. And it's just for air, just for service brakes. Um, if you see this, this, this kind of brake chamber is known as the piggyback, and this has spring brakes. So this back half right here is a big spring that acts as your parking emergency brakes. And then your service brake chamber is this right here. So you can see how that looks pretty pretty similar there as, as well. Um, so this one is, is going to be a spring back here and service, a spring and service brake, what they call a piggyback. And this one's just going to be just a service brake. Um, uh, ABS, got to have ABS on anything built since 1998. Uh, you're going to see a ABS malfunction lamp on the left side. If you have electrical wires going to your brakes, all right, that's going to tell you that that's your ABS line, um, your ABS electrical line. And once again, here's another picture of a, a B train. Uh, this is my buddy Levi that, that pulls these. Uh, pretty cool. Um, you can see the, the front trailer. And then you can see this right here is all connected to this front trailer here um, with a fifth wheel on the back. So you got a pivot point there and a pivot point there. And what they call a B train double flatbed right there. Uh, the crack the whip effect. So when you make a quick lane change or sudden movement of your steering wheel, the rear trailer tends to swing out. The force of the rear trailer becomes amplified, causing it to roll over. This is known as rearward amplification. So when you're hauling doubles, triples, it's really, really important to know this term, rearward amplification. Um, and what that means is you make a slight movement of your steering wheel up front, and that's going to amplify all the way down. And that's the reason they call that the, 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 the crack the whip effect, is that think of a whip. What actually happens when that whip cracks? It, um, it amplifies. When you swing it, it amplifies all the way down where it gets faster and faster and faster to the point where the tip of it is actually breaking the speed of sound. It's a miniature sonic boom. And um, and that uh, rearward amplification, crack the whip effect, is going to happen where you make a, make a movement on your steering wheel and amplifies all the way down where a couple inches up here could turn into a foot back here moving back and forth. Um, and so it's really important to know this, and that's why we never want to jerk that steering wheel. We never want to steer aggressively because it's going to amplify all the way back. Uh, when you turn suddenly while pulling doubles, the rear trailer is twice as likely to turn over as the tractor. So once again, you can see here that uh, as you start adding more trailers, uh, this effect gets greater. And so if you're pulling doubles, once again, it's going to, it's going to roll over twice as likely to turn over as the tractor and triples three and a half times more than than the tractor. So it, it's one of those things that and that's why you need to have extra training when hauling LCVs is is because there's a lot more that goes into them and and uh, you have to be more defensive, more careful, and just overall a better driver. And this is really important because half of all truck driver deaths are a result of rollovers. Uh, so when you increase your likelihood of having a rollover. Well, it's really important to be more careful and more defensive when you're driving, especially a unit like this.